Hi guys and welcome back, I'm Adam Thomas. Thank you all so much for being here. If you are not already subscribed to the channel, make sure to click the subscription button, smash the like button if you enjoy this content and click the bell icon to get notified of all my latest updates. As you can probably see, the big banana in the background, the neon sign has now gone. That's been replaced by my Unigloves neon sign, my uh, sponsor's Unigloves, who you'll have seen in my videos, the black gloves that I wear. They've kindly sent me over this neon sign. So if you check the description of the video, you'll get the links to all their uh, YouTube, social media, so you can go and check those guys out. Today we are doing a time lapse. And if you've seen my time lapses already, you'll know that we're basically just gonna watch me tattoo uh, a full day session, which is like roughly six, seven hours. It's gonna get condensed down to 15 minutes. Uh, and I'm just gonna talk you through everything that I'm doing from needles to inks to process, uh, to technique, to everything that I do. And hopefully give you guys a little bit of a, an insight into what I do and hopefully that might help you guys out. Uh, so with all that being said, let's roll the titles and then we'll jump straight into the time lapse. And now we have matchy matchy colours. Sorts out my OCD. Let's open up the laptop, get some water, um, and let's go. So, first things first, uh, as you can see, the stencil is massive. Uh, we are right down um, at like the, at the the Achilles, and it goes right the right the way up to the back of the knee, which is uh, yeah a little bit a little bit brutal as we get further into the day, but um, totally worth it. It looked it looked really sick by the time we'd finished, so uh, yeah, well worth uh, well worth putting it to that size and that placement. Uh, so we're starting off the bottom with these uh, these hundred dollar bills. Um, doing this little tiny portrait. Um, I can't remember, because being from the UK, which present that is, but all of my American followers and subscribers and viewers, drop it in the comments, let me know uh, what present that is, um, because it was a tiny, tiny portrait. So uh, yeah, I actually managed to do two portraits uh, on this day. Uh, so at the moment I'm using a uh, three, I'm using a five bug pin liner. Uh, these are from Tatsol. These are the Tatsol Envy Gen 2s. Um, I'll drop some links in the description so you can go and check those out. They're really comfortable. They've got a big rubber grip on them. Um, so rest on your finger really nice. Really comfortable to tattoo with. Really solid needles. No wobbles, no vibrations. They're, they're really good. Um, so because these, um, it's a very small part of the tattoo. Uh, there's lots of tiny little details, all the little um, sort of like the writing and the, the, the reference numbers and serial numbers and stuff like that on there. Um, at the moment, my GoPro is just falling off my light a little bit. Uh, I do adjust that back in a sec, so uh, don't worry too much about that. Um, but yeah, so I'm using just my liner at the moment just to get in there, get all these little tiny details in, and I'll probably whip back over with, uh, that was me taping the GoPro back on. Uh, and I'll whip back over with a uh, seven curve mag just to uh, soften a few of the edges out, get rid of a few of the mag marks, um, et cetera. Um, so I'm probably using a combination, uh, if you've watched my um, how to tattoo that rubber hand uh, with the rose, um, I tend to use a combination of dipping between pots. So I'll be dipping into my dark tone and then just tapping into my black, uh, which will just give me that slightly dark tone. So it won't be as brutal as black, won't be as brutal as black, uh, but it'll still give us a really nice dark tone. Um, so, so yeah, so this is me going back in with a seven mag. So we're just nipping over some of these lines just to give us those uh, nice soft tones, um, just to, uh, so we're not causing too much trauma with the liner. Um, the liner, we need that to get in with those, those tiny details, but to, uh, to put in that shade and that tone, uh, the seven mag sort of does the job a lot better. Uh, so this will be a 15 curve mag using a medium tone probably dipping into my light tone just to uh, smooth it out into the uh, into the leg. So we're just doing a little bit of background around the, uh, it looks like a license plate, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's got a proper name, you know, like the thing where they take the, the mugshot. because so obviously this, this is his prison photo. Um, so that's his, uh, his prison number, I presume. Um, so, cause that's white around the outside, I just wanted to get a bit of shade in uh, around there just to hold that edge. And then I do a similar thing on this side uh, in a little bit, just to hold the, uh, the bottom of the notes. So we're just dropping in this drop shadow underneath the board thing. Drop it in the comments if you know what that thing's called, because it was bugging me all day. I really, really should have Googled it. So this will all be with a seven mag now, um, and dark dipped into um, dipped into black. Uh, in fact, this is probably just black, just getting these numbers in. 
So the 7 Mag worked really well. It was the exact pretty much width of these numbers. So I was able just to sort of get straight through there uh, using the mag um, just to block out those numbers. Uh, so these weren't lined, these are just magged in. So they'll have that sort of slightly rough, fluffy edge to them. Uh, but I kind of wanted that, I wanted that realism sort of look to this little plaque. Um, so it wasn't like perfectly crisp, perfectly uh, perfect. Um, just so it had that, that edge of realism to it. Uh, at this point of the tattoo on the leg, uh, it's it's not the most sort of easy one to tattoo with the bottom. It was a lot of sort of bending around and trying to twist and, and everything like that. Once we get sort of into the meat of the calf, uh, it's a lot easier to tattoo just because it's just square there and I don't have to sort of bend and round. So luckily that's where the portrait was. So I made my life, life a lot easier. Uh, the stencil was staying on really well, um, so I was able to sort of keep everything nice and clean, get a lot of soap on there, get all the, uh, the excess ink away. So I just went back into my drawers then. Uh, that was for me to get out a 14 round liner. So with the writing that's above here, uh, I just wanted a slightly bigger needle so I could get in there with a liner. So the mag was probably not ideal for it, not being able to carve out the letters. Uh, the little uh, five booking would have just been way too small. I don't like to uh, uh, cause too much trauma to try and get those letters in. So uh, the 14 round went in uh, and did the job well. I used that again to, uh, to line the, 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 uh, the script at the top. Um, so, uh, I did, yeah, it did come in useful. Uh, so we're just doing that little bit of background that I mentioned before. So the same on the other side, medium tone, just washing that through, just giving us a little bit of sort of, sort of bulking it out more than anything. So as it sort of tapers down to the angle, I just wanted to sort of square that off, um, just so it sort of didn't taper too much. And we have this little, little faffy bit at the bottom. So now I'm moving up into the shirt. So the photo wasn't the greatest, um, with it being a mugshot, obviously it wasn't like supposed to be an incredible photo. Um, so the uh, the quality wasn't amazing, uh, but that kind of works in our favor. So as I'm doing the shirt, uh, I didn't want this to be like super, super crisp and, um, and sharp and in focus because it's not there in the reference. Uh, so I'm just using a 15 curve mag and just blocking everything out. So um, just using some light wash here and just whipping over the background just so that it's not just a floating head. Uh, but we're just concentrating on getting the, the heavy shadows underneath the lapel of the shirt uh, and all the pattern work that's on there. Uh, the other big heavy shadows are just where the shirt hits the neck. Uh, so again, that'll be dark wash, just going through that, uh, just hitting that really hard, getting it nice and solid, a little bit of black, just where it gets really, really dark, uh, but just trying to keep the values uh, and everything true to the piece. Uh, so again, same as always, we're starting with the darkest part. So dark, starting with that really dark shadow, then we'll move out and get all the lighter tones in there. Um, any sort of little patterns like this little bit that I'm doing now, um, I just end up doing those just with the coil of my mag. So instead of getting my liner out and making it too crispy, just use the coil of my mag, keep that nice and soft and fluffy, um, just so we haven't got anything particularly in focus. We just want it to sort of sort of sit there, blur out, so the main focus is on the face uh, and the portrait. So now we're just hitting the uh, the shadow underneath the, uh, the chin. Uh, so again, one of the darkest shadows on the face. Uh, just get that in, that gives us uh, sort of a starting tone and then we can work backwards from that tones through the piece. <coughs> so I think at this point we probably took a lunch break. I have cut that a little bit out. So we go straight back into tattoo. So you'll see him sort of jump up and then jump back on. Uh, we did have like a good sort of half an hour lunch break. Um, just ripping off a load more paper towels. Um, as you know, you go through stacks and stacks. Uh, could do with being sponsored by paper towels. That would save me an absolute fortune in the studio. Uh, so yeah, so we've had a half an hour lunch break. Everything's starting to settle down a little bit more. Uh, the stencil is still staying on really nice and solid. Uh, so when I wrap up for a lunch break, I'll put a paper towel over it first and then wrap up with some cling film. That just stops uh, the cling film from sweating the stencil off so you haven't got a big blurry mess. Uh, but obviously your client can, can wander around safely and you're not gonna worry about the tattoo getting damaged. Uh, so now we're just hitting um, all these shadows on the cheeks or the, well, sort of the, the lower jaw. Uh, again, the light's sort of coming down and hitting the forehead. So a lot of the shadows getting cast sort of down on the lower jaw and underneath the chin. So we just need to focus on those first, get those shadows in. Uh, and again, that gives us that starting value and we can work backwards from that through the piece, keep everything nice and solid and true to the reference. The next big shadows are the, uh, those sort of the, the smile lines. I think they're called. Um, so just like these little bits here, getting those in nice and solid, and then just working our way through the uh, through the lips. So I'm using a seven. So the two mags that I've got today is a seven curved, fifteen curved. 
So um, it's one of those two. If it's small, tiny detail, it's probably the seven. Uh, if I'm trying to smooth stuff out, it's probably gonna be bumping up to the 15. So um, it should be fairly, fairly obvious. It's hard to really tell because obviously everything's going so fast in the time lapse, but it's one of those two. I think this at the moment is the 15, just because I'm getting these big areas on the side of the nose sort of done. Um, and then once I get into the eyes, I'll drop down into the seven, just to black those out. Um, again, there's not a lot of detail in the eyes. Well, there's not a lot of detail in, in most of it, to be fair. So there's a few elements that I'm sort of making up. There's a few elements that I'm just sort of trying to stay true to it because I kind of want it to have that, that authentic look of that, um, that image of uh, Pablo. So, uh, so yeah, so we're trying, trying to stay as true as, true as we can to the reference. So we're just blacking out the hair. I'm sure this felt absolutely amazing. Um, so this will be dark wash dipped into black. So I won't be using just true solid black. Um, so I don't want it to be like too overpowering and different to the rest of the piece. So I want it to sort of settle in uh, and look right. Uh, so we did a bit of that. I didn't want to go too high because I do want to line the writing. So I kind of get up to the writing, stop, line all that in, and then I block that back in. Uh, so we do this cool thing where we sort of do the writing that crosses over the top of the hair in white. So leave that blank as skin. And then anything that like, jumps above the hair, we do that in black, so we've got that two-tone writing. Uh, it's a really cool effect. It looks looks really nice when it's all finished. So you can see I'm just sort of dragging that back up and just getting as close as I can to the writing without sort of like uh, sort of destroying the stencil. Uh, and then we'll go back to that and line that in. So we've got the one eye in, so we're back to um, seven curve mag, just blocking that in with some uh, black dipped into uh, into dark or dark dipped into, so dark tapped into black just to make that a little bit darker. Uh, so yeah, once you get the eyes in, it starts to come to life, starts making sense. <coughs> ah, something is proper tickling my throat. So, so far the skin's not looking too angry. So again, this is one of the reasons why I was able to get so much done. It was just going in really nice, really easy. Uh, like I said, my client was sitting well. Um, kept checking in and it was, you know, it wasn't feeling the best, but he was sitting well, which just gave me just that extra little bit of, uh, ability to get more and more done so uh, yeah we got got a nice big piece done in the end so again just getting this dark hair in before I start getting the uh, the shadows on the side of the forehead so again so I've got that dark reference I can work backwards from that so I'm not sort of hitting hitting tones that are too dark um, on the face and then trying to go back into the hair and finding out that I've gone too dark here and I can't get dark enough on the hair because obviously I can only go as dark as black um, so 15 curve mag, we're just whipping through with some um, sort of dark medium tones. Uh, so it'll probably be medium, just tapped into dark, just give me that, that little bit of a tone just so I can uh, whip over the, over the head. All this front bit here, this will be a light tone. Um, the inks that I'm using are Empire inks, again I'll drop those in the description. Uh, these are their grey wash series, so um, they've got in essence a little bit of white mixed in with them. Uh, so it gives you not like an opaque gray look, but it, it, it just softens that ink really nicely and just sits in the skin well. Uh, they have like an extra light in their uh, in their gray wash set, so it's dark, medium light, and extra light. Extra light's really good just for like hitting the skin, almost just irritating it, so it just softens everything in. If you've got any mag marks, you can wash that over and it'll just plug those gaps really nicely, keep everything nice and smooth. So this is where I'm back with my 14 round liner. Uh, so this will be just dark tone. So what I don't want to do is hit these lines with, with really solid black. So then when I try and pack that in, I've got a line around the outside. I want my, my fill to be as dark as my outline. So uh, I tend to use uh, a dark wash and then I'll go in with dark and black just to, uh, just to fill those out um, and get it all nice and solid. So this probably felt horrible doing this, but um, it's got to be done. So now all that script is lined in, I don't have to worry about that, that's all my stencil done and dusted. Uh, so I can do, uh, I can make as much mess and, and clean as much as I want now. Um, so this is where I'm doing the reverse of uh, filling out the writing. So we're finishing off the hair and uh, blocking all that in, which is gonna leave us the negative space for the writing. So that's gonna be the white section. And once there we get to that hairline, I'll be going then into the, into the text, into the script, and then filling out that black, uh, which again, gives us a really cool, nice effect. Um, yeah, and it's just it just uh, really finishes off the piece at the top. So yeah, just blocking this out. So again, this is 15 curve mag. Uh, this will be black, just then dipped into dark, just to knock it back a little bit, almost sort of to loosen it up, so it's not just solid black going in there. Uh, it's just that little bit easier to work with, a little bit easier to clean off the skin. 
um, and it, yeah, once it heals, it should give us that nice sort of uh, sort of nice sort of softer tone. So it'll still be really black, but it'll just be just slightly off, just so um, so that everything looks nice. So we just sprayed on a bit of black tea and just try and make it feel a little bit nicer in anticipation for the next bit that we're gonna do, which is gonna be blacking out that right on the top, which isn't gonna feel great. Uh, so I thought I'd just blast on a load of black tea. Uh, so we would have wrapped that up and left that on just for five minutes. Had a little break, uh, but I've just ch just chopped that out. So we've just come straight back. But yeah, we would have left that for for five ten minutes. So now we're going to go into the writing. So like I said, we're doing the reverse of what we just did. So where we had the hair going up to the outside of the line, we're now inside the lines, just blocking that out. So. Um, 15 curve mag, just hitting those lines and then just shading off the 14 round line. It just gives us that little bit of a buffer from the outside because it's not like a big line, but because we've got like quite a hefty line on the outside, it gives us plenty of room to get that mag on that line and mag out. Um, so yeah, we're staying in the lines. Um, I do move the camera in a second um, just to lift it up. I'm actually sort of over the top of the GoPro at the moment. Um, so yeah, just trying not to get my head in the way. Um, so yeah, there's not really a lot more to say about this bit at the moment. This is um, pretty much like watching someone do tribal. Um, my outlines are done and I'm just blocking it in black. So um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll just keep going with this. Like I say, my client was sitting really well. This is, uh, when the camera moves in a sec, you'll see it is, it's not in the back of the knee, but it's, it's near as damn it, the back of the knee. Um, so yeah, I've got something that goes probably to where the top of the hair is on the back of my calf. Uh, and that, that was more than enough for me going into the back of the knee. So yeah, this must've felt pretty, pretty rough. Uh, but we got there, we, uh, we smashed it out. There wasn't like a point where I felt like I had to hold back. Everything was just going in nice and solid. Um, and yeah, really hitting it in, hitting it in hard. Um, and again, that's why we got, managed to get so much done on the day really. Half the battle is skin, like so quality of skin, how quickly it's gonna go in in that sense, uh, and how well your client sits. Um, obviously the, the piece itself, but like those two are the variables that you can't control. Um, but yeah, it just made my life really easy. So yeah, I just move the GoPro up a little bit so you can see how high that sits on the back of the leg. Um, it looks a little bit higher laid down, um, stood up. I don't think I've got any photos of it stood up, but when when it is stood up, it, it's, not, it's not super in the back of the knee. So it's, um, it, it, it does sit well on the calf. So where sort of the back of the knee sort of, cut, sort of curves round onto the calf, that writing just sits really nice on there. And it was just so brutal, this writing, it just worked really well with the piece. Uh, very bold, big statement. Um, I can't remember what this translate out, translates to, uh, but if anyone knows, drop it in the comments. Uh, my client did tell me, and it's something that he did say. Um, so yeah, that's why that's on there. Um, so yeah, just chucked on a bit more back team. We're gonna go uh, into white, I presume, in a minute. Uh, I'll probably just soften out a few bits. Um, from what I remember, uh, I'd left sort of like the shadows on the top of the forehead, uh, which I'll probably do in a second, um, just where the hair hits the forehead. Um, it looked a little bit brutal, um, as in black onto skin. So I just go through and just soften that down a little bit. Um, just so uh, it doesn't look like we've just got this big black blob of hair. Um, but yeah, just going through the 15 mag with um, sort of the light and into like the extra light, uh, just to smooth out some of the tones, just to give us that nice sort of volume to the face. You can see already how that how much of a difference that made to the cheeks. Uh, so now we're hitting some white, so hitting those highlights in the eyes. It was mainly just eyes, nose, mouth uh, that I really hit the whites. So just uh, paying attention to my reference, making sure they're going in the same places where we've got these extreme highlights. Uh, just gives us that little bit of extra life to the piece. Um, so after I did that, and the back team has started to settle everything down, uh, I've noticed that just some of the uh, some of the really harsh shadows could have done with just getting bumped up a little bit more, just to give us that extra value. Uh, so just ran through with a little bit of black. Uh, hadn't made too much of a difference to uh, to the piece. So this is the end of my back team bottle. So uh, yeah, just doused it in it. But uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. So there you go guys, that was a time-lapse tattoo of Pablo Escobar, full calf piece. Like I say, uh, the main reason why we got it all done so quickly and so well is my clients that well and the skin was really good. So if you do want to see the finished piece, I'll pop it here. And if you do want to see it properly, make sure to head over to my Instagram um, so you can go and check it out over there. Drop some likes and comments and follow. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to smash the like button on this. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, click the subscription button and the bell icon, which will get you notified of all my latest updates. And with all that being said, guys, I will see you on the next video. Peace.